We previously went over how to find the line of best fit for a set of data points that don't exactly fall on a line. We use what's called the normal equation. I'll leave a link in the description to the lesson where we go over that. What the problem came down to was finding a vector in a subspace of Rn that was closest to some other vector in Rn outside of the subspace. And it's that exact same problem that we face when trying to fit a degree m polynomial to a set of data points. And so the exact same method of solution will suffice. The methods we've discussed so far can be used to fit a degree m polynomial to a set of data points. And I'll go over how to use this method in this more general context. So this is an arbitrary degree m polynomial. The idea idea is that we're going to find the coefficients a0, a1, and so on through am that create a polynomial best fitting a given set of data points. You can see if we have n data points, x1, y1, x2, y2, through xn, yn, we can create n equations. Each equation comes from taking one of these data points and plugging that point into the degree m polynomial with unspecified coefficients. For example, we plug in the first data point, x1, y1, and so we see we have y1 equals this polynomial, but with each x replaced by x1. And then in the second equation, we have y2 and then this expression, but with each x replaced by x2. We're taking each point and plugging it into the degree m polynomial. So we get n equations. Now, if this is a system of n linear equations, then indeed the same methods we used before with the normal equation apply here. Now, they might not look like n linear equations because we have x and x squared and x cubed and x to the 4 all the way up to x to the m. But keep in mind, it's not x that's unknown. In each of these equations, every power of x is a specific number. Those are not unknowns. They come from the data points. The things that are unknown in these equations are those coefficients, a0, a1, up through am. And all of these equations are linear with respect to those unknowns. So keep that in your mind. In all of these equations, the only things that aren't known are those a's, those coefficients. The y's, the x's, all of those are known. They come from a given set of data points, and it's to that set of data points that we're trying to match a degree m polynomial. And we can write this in the more condensed form y equals mv. y is the column vector of y coordinates from the known data points. v is the column vector of the unknown coefficients a0 through am, the coefficients of the polynomial that we're trying to find. And m is the matrix of coefficients of the a's. It sounds a little weird because a0 through am, those are what we would typically call the coefficients of the polynomial that we're trying to find. But with respect to this linear system, m, all of these powers of x, this is really the matrix of coefficients in the context of the linear system. In the context of the polynomial, the unknown a's are the coefficients. But in the linear system, it's all of these powers of x which are known and which are getting multiplied by those unknown a values. Our goal, of course, is to find the coefficients of a best-fitting polynomial. So once we find those coefficients, which are in the vector v, it should be that mv is as close to the vector y as possible. We're getting as close as possible to making all of these equations true. And to find those coefficients of the best fitting polynomial, we simply seek the least square solution, minimizing the error. And for that, 
As previously, we use the normal equation. m transpose times m times this vector v is equal to m transpose times y. Any solution to this normal equation will minimize the error, that is, the distance between the vector y and the vector m times v. So our least square solution probably isn't going to make this system true, but it will make the right side as close to the left side as possible. The normal equation may have infinitely many solutions, but if it has a unique solution, we solve this for v and find that the unique solution is this, m transpose m inverse times m transpose times y. So let's go through an example. We'll have four data points, and using this solution for the normal equation, we'll find the best fitting polynomial to that set of data points. So we have these four data points, and we're going to try to find the coefficients for a quadratic polynomial, which will fit these data points best. Again, the unknowns are these coefficients, a0, a1, and a2. We have a constant term, a linear term, and a squared term, because we're specifically looking for the best fitting degree 2 polynomial. Now, because we have four data points, we of course get four equations, one equation coming from each of the four points. For example, if we take the point 2, 0, we then plug that into our unknown degree 2 polynomial. Plug 0 in for y, and then each x is replaced by 2, so a1 times 2, and a2 times 2 squared. Just for another example, we take the point 7, negative 70, plug negative 70 in for y, and then each x is replaced by the x-coordinate of 7. So we have a0 plus a1 times 7 plus a2 times 7 squared. We can then write this system of equations in the more condensed matrix form. So this system of equations is the same as y equals m times v, where of course y is the column vector of the y-coordinates, v is the column vector of the unknown coefficients, and m is the matrix consisting of the coefficients of those unknowns, a0, a1, and a2. Now we're going to find the vector v that makes this system as close to true as possible by using the normal equation. Now this matrix M is invertible, so we're going to be able to find a unique solution here. So we're looking for M transpose M inverse times M transpose times Y. That will be our least square solution. Let's begin by finding M transpose times M. Here is M, so swapping rows and columns, we get that this is M transpose. So then M transpose times M is this 3 by 3 matrix. The computations here are quite tedious. Calculator is definitely preferred. Once we have M transpose times M, we can find its inverse and then multiply that by M transpose and then multiply that by Y to get the least square solution V. So here's all of that. This is the inverse of M transpose times M. So it's pretty ugly. That's what it is. Then we multiply that by M transpose, seen here, and then multiply that by Y, the column vector of the Y coordinates from the data points. Doing all that multiplication, we get this least squares solution. This least squares solution tells us the coefficients of the quadratic that best fits the data points. We see that the first entry is the constant, the second entry is the coefficient of the linear term, and the third entry is the coefficient of the square term. So this is the least squares quadratic fit to the given data points, and we can compute that the least squares error is about 1.003. And here is a graph of the data points and our least squares quadratic fit you can see that the data points are very close to our quadratic. This is a pretty good fit to the data points. And in fact, since we used our methods of linear algebra, we know that this is the best possible quadratic fit to these data points.
So that's how to use the normal equation to find a best fitting polynomial to a set of data points. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in this course. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.